faces a song in my heart. And um, I was praying, the, you know, uh, the last couple of weeks, um, you know, about just different things in, in our lives and different things in our church. And um, the Lord, of course, uh, led me back to His Word. He led me back to His Word. And he, he, he led me to certain times when I should be uh, reading the Word and, and meditating on the Word, uh, you know, uh, other than uh, just morning. So I usually get up in the morning and, and get into the Word, but um, there's other times that um, you need to get into the Word. And one of the times that I need to get into the Word is every evening, too, you know. And, you know, I've noticed a difference in my life. I've noticed a difference in my sleep patterns and everything else when I have got into the Word. And, I, and I, of course, you know, when the Lord starts revealing uh, yourself to you, it's not a very pretty picture sometimes. And, uh, you know, uh, but uh, so here was my prayer. I want to share it with you this morning. training me up and he was downloading his word uh, in a lot, a lot of ways to me that that word a lot of times would come in the evening and if if we would learn to start the next day in the evening with the word of God it'll bring health to your soul and health to your spirit and so uh, that's just my own personal testimony. And uh, I just want to encourage us to uh, return to the Lord. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we sit around at night and we veg out and watch television and stuff. And, you know, and you, we know that everything on the television is just pure as the driven snow, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and how much of that stuff gets in our life? How much of that stuff do we let in, you know, a lot of times? And it's the, uh, it's the world instead of God we're letting in. And so I, uh, I just want to encourage myself uh, to, for God to purify my heart. Created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And um, let's say our purpose statement together. Whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. Now, as we look at Christ and His kingdom, now, um, it's, it always amazes me how God puts a Sunday together. The same 
message that Sarah teaches in her Sunday school classes a lot of times is the same message I preach. Now, we don't coordinate this, but the Holy Ghost does. Amen. You know? And so, um, uh, it, it, it's like getting a, a double dose of the ghost if you come to Sunday school and in service, right? So, um, but as we look at Christ and His kingdom, we are to realize that we do not have a kingdom on this earth. Now, I, I know us Americans, we think that, you know, we have a kingdom on this earth, but really we don't. We don't have a kingdom on this earth, uh, but, but one that is in the heavens. Now, when Christ was before Pilate, and Pilate was uh, questioning him, Jesus Christ said if, that if, if his kingdom were of this world, that his servants would, would come and, uh, and fight on his behalf. But he was, uh, has a kingdom that is outside of this world, and so it says in Colossians, when we get saved, we are translated into the kingdom of God. And so therefore, we are the, in the kingdom of heaven rather than an inhabitor of the earth. And so, uh, but a lot of times, you know, we get it confused. You know, we want, we want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, fight against the evil down here. And, I, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, but, uh, you know, because there's a lot of evil here, right? And we need to be uh, on our knees praying about it and different things. But sometimes in our zeal for God, we try and establish our own kingdom instead of seeking for His. Uh, sometimes in our zeal for God, we try and establish our own righteousness <coughs> instead of seeking His. Amen. See, God is our righteousness. I don't have any righteousness. The Lord Jesus is my righteousness. You say, well, you know, uh, uh, well you're, you're a pastor. I said, yeah, but my righteousness is not in being a pastor. My righteousness is not in being a Baptist. My righteousness is in a person and His name is Jesus. Matthew 6.33, Jesus said this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so uh, our job is not to seek uh, and build our own uh, uh, kingdom or establish our own righteousness. Our job is to seek His righteousness and His kingdom. When we look at the cults that are on this earth, we find them attempting to establish their own kingdoms and their own righteousness in this earth. Many want to label everyone but themselves heretics and kill everyone that does not believe like they do. And um, years ago, the uh, Catholic Church tried to mix Christianity and politics and would kill anyone that went against their doctrines. They were the terrorists of the day. There's another little known fact of history that the Protestants killed almost as many as the Catholics did in their zeal for God. That was the ones that broke off the Catholic Church. Baptists are neither Catholic or Protestant. We are, uh, we are the church. Okay. Now, the Sanhedrin killed Jesus because they wanted God their own way instead of the Lord of glory. You can imagine that. Are churches still killing Jesus today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In our world today, we have the 6th century cult alive and active. Islam labels everyone that does not believe like they do a heretic and seeks to kill all rivals. Mormonism says that their Latter-day Saints group is the Lord's kingdom once again established, established on the earth. Jehovah's Witnesses call their buildings kingdom halls. Therefore, it is the tendency of the people in every age to want to establish their own little kingdoms on earth, all in the name of God, of course. The one thief on the cross that was crucified with Jesus, he saw Jesus as a king of a kingdom that was outside of this earth. Because he said, Lord, he started seeing him as Lord too, by the way. He said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? He started seeing Jesus as a king of a kingdom that was outside of this world. When you come into your kingdom, would you remember me? Now they both prayed to him, and the other one prayed, Lord, or they, he didn't say Lord, but he says, if, if, you know, if, if you can get us off this Christ, you know, get, uh, get me off this cross, and, and uh, you know, oh, by the way, save yourself too. You know, 
He wanted to get back into the world, but the one thief wanted to get to, get to heaven. Jesus said to him, This day you will be with me in paradise. And so, uh, Jesus did not fight with people on this earth because he came to save them, not to destroy them. As a Christian, what is to be our standard in receiving the kingdom of God? Today I will use the Apostle Paul to preach to you what we should be identified with. Now, the Apostle Paul, he had been in Thessalonica, and you can read it in Acts 17. Then he went down to Berea. Then he went down to Athens. And then in uh, uh, Acts 18, he came to Corinth. Now, he was in Athens. He was um, uh, preaching the... Uh, he was uh, arguing against the... Uh, and preaching the unknown God. You know, the, the Athenians, they were uh, the, the philosophers of the day, and uh, they had a, a shrine re uh, erected to the unknown God. And um, in case they missed one, right? They had all these shrines and, you know, all these gods, and then they had one to the unknown God in case they missed one. Well, the Apostle Paul comes up and preaches the unknown God because they didn't know him. And he preaches Jesus to them. And a few people get saved. But then he goes to Corinth, and he is uh, teaching the Corinthians, and this is what he is, uh, he is preaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 8. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I don't want to know about how religious you are. I don't want to know about how your doctrines are. I want, I want to know one thing. Are you identified with the cross of Jesus? And you know, I heard Sarah say this morning, a lot of Christendom today has denied the cross of Jesus. You see, we want to establish our own little kingdoms and, and we want pie in the sky, sweet by and by, and we want a health and wealth message and all this stuff, but we have overlooked the cross. A lot of the hymn books have taken the blood songs out of their hymn books because they want to overlook the cross. We need to understand that as Christianity and Christianity, to be identified with Christ is to be identified with His cross. Amen. You see, it says, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Our faith cannot stand in the wisdom of men. It must stand in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not, not have crucified the Lord of glory. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would pick up on this today in our spirit and follow you to the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What, had, what had happened at Corinth is happening in churches today. Men are mixing philosophy or man's wisdom with God's revealed message. And this is uh, causing confusion and division. Different preachers have their own interpretation to God's message, and some even invent their own vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Paul centered his message on the death of Christ. Paul did not come to Corinth to tickle the ears of believers, nor to start a religious fan club for Paul. Paul came to glorify Christ. Paul did not want to know how good the Corinthian church uh, was, was. He wanted to know one thing, and that was how they were relating to the death of Christ. We have people going around uh, trying to prepare for a fight here on earth when we really should be preparing our hearts for faith in God. 
You see, uh, uh, a lot of uh, yeah, we've heard uh, rumors of, well, there's going to be a, a civil war or something like that. We need to prepare our hearts for faith in God. We need to come to the cross uh, because Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Glory! We need to understand that our peace does not come uh, from, uh, from uh, a military militia. We need to understand that our peace comes from the Lord of glory. We need to understand that our peace comes from Jesus Christ. Uh, and we need to understand uh, that we are to be in Him uh, for, uh, for us to be in peace. This peace, my peace, I give unto you. He said, Wow, would you like to have the Lord's peace? Yes. Amen? Amen. Oh, now, Lord. Paul centered his message on the death of Christ. We have people here on earth, and when we really should be praying, uh, that are prepared for a fight, uh, that we really we should be preparing our hearts for faith in God. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. See, when we try to mix the gospel message with anything except Christ and His death, then we are in error. We have been so busy trying to figure out how America fits into the picture of prophecy that I fear that we have mixed our religion with politics. We have not glorified Christ. We have been glorifying ourselves in sinful pride. The itinerant philosophers and and teachers depended on their, their wisdom and eloquence to, to gain followers. The city of Corinth was filled with such spellbinders. Paul did not depend uh, on eloquent uh, speech or clever arguments. He simply declared God's Word in the power of the Spirit. He was an ambassador, not a Christian salesman. <laughs> yes. Amen. He was an ambassador for Christ. That's right. You know, a lot of people are out there, they're Christian salesmen. Well, you know, you need to believe like this and give your money like this and, and, we, and you need to act like this and, and you know, uh, uh, you, if, and, you know, be, a, a, be a, a, you know, in, a, a, all religious. And they have these eloquent speeches and all this stuff. A certain church had a beautiful stained glass window just behind the pulpit. It depicted Jesus Christ on the cross. One Sunday there was a guest minister who was much smaller than the regular pastor. A little girl listened to the guest for a time, then turned to her mother and asked, where is the man who usually stands there so we can't see Jesus? Wow. Too many preachers of the Word so magnify themselves and their gifts that they fail to reveal the glory of Jesus Christ. Paul glorified in the cross of Christ. Galatians 6.14 and it made, uh, made it the center of his message. Galatians 6.14 says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Mm. That was his glory. Oh, he could have gloried in a lot of stuff. The Apostle Paul was the up and coming Jew. He was the up-and-coming Gamaliel, if you will. And he, uh, in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, he gives his pedigree. He said that was his Hebrew of the Hebrews. and You know, touching the law, Pharisee, uh, you know, blameless and all this stuff. But he says he counted it all but loss for the excellency of Jesus Christ and His righteousness. We are so busy trying to hang on to what we have that we have no time to glorify Christ. Listen to the words of Jesus. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any man... Now, that word any means any of us. Okay? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? These, all these rich billionaires that are running the United States of America, their, their money is not going to save them. Their position isn't going to save them. All their power isn't going to save them. Because they're going to stand before God just like everyone else, naked, with whom we'll have to deal with. You see, if we are to be ready to bear the cross of Jesus, it will take responsible faith in the church today. Paul was ready to be poured out as a drink offering into the Lord. Likewise, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, not having the mind of the world, but we are to be living sacrifices unto God. And, and uh, this is a familiar passage to us because I've preached it lately, but uh, in Romans chapter 12, 1 through 3, he says, I beseech you, or that word beseech is, some of your translations will say, I urge you. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know what the mercies of God are? The mercies of God is not giving us what we deserve, right? right? By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And in verse 2 says, And don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. We show responsible faith when we put ourselves under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you're a man, you're a woman, you're a child. The, man, the head of every man is Christ. That man, Men, you have to put yourself under the leadership of Christ. The head of every woman is man. Uh, women, you're going to have to put yourself under the leadership of men. And it says the head of Christ is God. And He's our example. He stayed under the submission of God even to the death of the cross. Do we trust God with our lives or not? He really can be trusted, you know. It will be when we turn every aspect of our lives over to Christ to use as He will, we will see the power of God once again in the church. We are afraid of what we will have to go through for the kingdom of God. How close are we to letting God have His way in our lives? Perhaps it will mean persecution or death. Are you ready to trust Christ? How much are, really, how much are we really going to hang on to? Uh, how much are we really going to hang on to our lives anyway? Us Americans want to hang on to our freedom. However, Jesus said that whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin. And I say, do you really... We're not holding on to freedom. We gave that away a long time ago. Amen. Through sin. We're hanging on to our life of luxury in the name of freedom. The last prophet in the Old Testament, John the Baptist, came on the scene and he proclaimed that Jesus was a lamb that takes away the sin of the world. And then he preached this, Repent you for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Chandra read it a while ago. He says, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The axe is going to be laid at the root of every tree. And you see, the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, a lot of them missed the coming of the Messiah. He was among the people doing miracles. They were watching it do it. He was, uh, he was there, uh, but they wouldn't receive the one that God sent. Because why? Because they had their own little kingdom to defend. And you know what? Finally, they couldn't handle it anymore. They just crucified him. Got rid of him. 
And the Lord calls us the same calling that Jesus had. Denying yourself. How much self-denial did Jesus go through? All of it. <laughs> he was the Lord of glory yeah. that took on human flesh. You know? He told Peter, Peter, if I wanted to, I could call 12 legions of angels down here. I mean, he was in charge. He was the God of glory. And he came down and he took on human flesh so he could die for the sins of you and I. Jesus came on the scene and listen to what he preached in Mark chapter 115. Jesus came on the scene and said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe the good news. The good news is here. His name is Jesus. Luke 24. I'm going to close uh, with this uh, passage in Luke 24. Luke 24. It was the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus. He was, pre he was teaching the, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he, was, uh, he was talking with them. And, uh, and Jesus, as He was going along, He is the one that opened up their understanding. And in verse 45, it says, Then opened He their understanding that they might understand what? The Scripture. Okay? We need to understand this. Not men's philosophy. We need to understand the Scripture. And Jesus is the one that opened them up, their, opened their understanding they might understand the Scriptures. And He said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. And He led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up His hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while He blessed them that He was, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped Him and returned to Jerusalem heavy hearted? No. With great joy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're continuing in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Amen. My commission here today is the same one that Paul preached and the same one that Jesus preached. Repent and believe the gospel because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This church is placed in the middle of Fernley for one reason, that it, and that is to bring glory to God, the God of gods, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, and His name is Jesus. May God bless the preaching of His word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know how much of that message we can stand. Because uh, a lot of people want to be told. They, it says that they're in the last days, which we're in the last days, they're, they're going to go to uh, these preachers having itching ears, you know. That they're, they're wanna, they want them to preach what they want them to uh, preach so they'll uh, get the good feely goods, right? And uh, on this, this earth. But we are not in it for this earth. If you lose your life, you shall gain it, Jesus said. Okay? Now, Jesus lost his life, but he gained it. And every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. You know, that Jesus Christ is Lord to what? To the glory of God the Father. You know? And, so, and, and, uh, and we need to go to the cross every day. The Apostle Paul said, I die daily, every day. And uh, I just wonder if there's anyone here today, and uh, hey, I need to be reminded of that. 
I need to be reminded of where my faith lies. Does it lie in my ability to pastor a church or, or anything like that? No, it lies in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His ability to work in our midst. That's what has to happen. You know, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, uh, grow a church. Um, I mean, I guess you can, a lot of people do, on, on feeling good uh, things, but we, the true church has to be grown uh, in the cross of Jesus, and that's where our faith lies. And I wonder if there's anyone here this morning that needs to come to Christ for the first time, maybe. Come to Christ and say, Lord, you know, man, I'm, uh, I'm going to repent of my sins because I'm preaching, I want to preach the same thing. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I need to repent of my sins. I need to receive Christ as my Savior. I'm going to keep preaching it because that's what Jesus told us to preach. That's what he preached. That's what John the Baptist preached. Well, same message. And it's a message uh, today because the gospel, the good news, has come. His name is Jesus. He's the one that overcame hell, death, you know, and the world. And he turns around and he wants to give those things to us. Uh, and he wants to give us his peace. Uh, but we have to have faith in him. Uh, you've heard me say, salvation is free, but it's going to cost you your life. Yeah. Right? Right. And so you have to lay down your life and, and, and pick up the cross and follow him. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Because I feel like God is, is uh, uh, moving on the hearts of some people this morning. And I just want to give you the opportunity before we dismiss from this service to, uh, to receive Christ as your Savior. And, and to flee from the wrath to come. Because uh, John the Baptist also says, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Because if you don't receive Christ, the wrath of God is going to be upon you. It says that in, in John 3.36. And I don't want the wrath of God to be on you. I want the grace of God to be upon you. I want the forgiveness of God to be in your heart. And if there's one here this morning, or two, or however many, that says needs to say yes to Jesus and flee from the wrath to come, because of their sin, I want you to receive Christ as your Savior. And you can wave at me or something like that and say, you know, hey, I need to do that this morning. And I promise I'll pray for you. Because uh, there's, there's a lot of souls in today's church that have not uh, been to the cross of Jesus. They say, well, I just want to go to church and get my little bit of religion on me so, uh, so I can feel better about myself. But that's not where it's at. It's about following Jesus to the cross. And um, I'm going to keep on teaching and preaching that. Same thing that Sarah is teaching and preaching in her Sunday school class. And so we praise God for, uh, for that message. Amen. And so, yeah, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Lord, and I know that there's some people here that are trying to make the decision. Lord, uh, I just pray, Father, for them in their heart, Lord, that they would repent of their sins and come to you. And Lord, repent. And then because they repent and believe, follow you in baptism. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, uh, that Lord, you would deal with the hearts today. Because Lord, it's not, it's not even my preaching. I, I don't, I'm like the Apostle Paul, I'm not eloquent or anything. But I'm going to preach the power of God. Amen. Amen. I see that. Amen. And um, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's bow for it. And Chris, I'm going to pray with you, okay? And, uh, and you know, it says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? And that's, that means every one of us, right? We've all had to call upon the name of the Lord and, Amen. and, uh, and be saved. And, and so, uh, but... Um, but God is dealing with some people this morning. Uh, so let's, let's uh, call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, Father, uh, Lord, I just want to come before you and confess my sins before you. I want to flee to you from the wrath to come. Lord, I, I just want to you to save my soul. And Lord, I believe that you are so powerful that you raised up Jesus from the dead. And Lord, I want you to raise me from the dead 
deadness of sin. And Lord, I want to follow you and pick up my cross and follow you, Lord. And Lord, um, I just uh, thank you and I praise you. And Lord, I just pray this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. And Brother Chris, would you, would you mind coming forward? Amen. I, uh, uh, I don't want to embarrass Chris or anything, but uh, he's probably already embarrassed. He, says, too late. he probably said, too late, Pastor. Too late. So, but anyway, uh, uh, everyone here loves you. You know that. And, and um, uh, you know, I saw the Holy Spirit just dealing with Chris all through service. And, and uh, he, he wants to come and, and receive Christ and flee from the wrath to come, right? Yes, so we we'll call him. And if we, if we confess, if we confess Jesus before men, he'll confess us before the Father. Hallelujah. But if we deny him before men, he'll deny us before the Father, right? Yes. Right. So, so you're confessing him before men. Praise the Lord. All right. Want to say anything? All right. Uh, I just want to be forgiveness, forgive for all the stuff I've done bad. I mean, I'm trying to do good and stuff now. Uh, I feel like I'm on the right path. Uh, right. I just want to keep staying on that road. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Yes. Amen. And, uh, and this church should be an environment where people can grow spiritually, right? And and get the word in them. And, and so we want to encourage you to come and, and uh, get under the, the leadership of uh, the word of God, you know, and God here. All right, so praise God. So anyway, we're just, I, I, we just, I just wanted to glorify God together with you. Thank you, brother. All right, man. Welcome. God bless Love you. Love you. All right. Um, I like it when people make, you know, a decision to follow Christ. You know? Yeah. There's an old song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, right. No turning back, no turning back, right? Amen. All right. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Anybody got a word to say before we dismiss this morning? Yes. I just want to let everybody know that Isla, baby Isla, is recovering. She is a slow road ahead. She had open heart surgery at, what, five pounds? Oh, but uh, continued prayers, but she's, she's on her road to recovery. Amen. And uh, uh, Linda, that usually sits here every other Sunday, Linda. Oh yeah. Uh, she uh, she's going in in October for heart surgery, and so uh, I was trying to get her on the back of the bulletin. But um, be praying for for Linda, and um, she works, so she's only can come every other Sunday. But uh, she's a she's a dear sister in the Lord. So. Yes. Touch on what you said earlier. Lately, uh, every morning, you know, when I go to go up, it's out of time for me. But, past 25 years, I've always prayed in the evening. Now I go to the book, it helps me see, it touched it. You were I'm saying exactly how, you know, I've been living just getting the word right before you go to bed at night, turn everything off. And it's it's done wonders in my life, so I just encourage that. Yeah, it must be a Holy Ghost thing, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, uh, the, uh, the Jewish day started the night before. And um, we, can, we can learn something from that, you know. And if we start our day the night before in the Word of God, it'll make a difference in your life, I'll guarantee you. I'll guarantee you. Um, amen. Yes, Jerome. 
I want to say thank you, for, uh, everybody, for the prayer and everything for last week and everything, because there she is now, Mary Ray. Oh. Amen. Amen. Thank you for reaching out and bringing this beautiful uh, family uh, in, you know. You're my best. Uh, yeah, so, amen. Amen. And Jerome hasn't even joined yet, and he's bringing people, so thank you. But hey, church membership has to be a God thing too, right? It's not. Yeah. God places members in the body where it pleases Him, so. Uh, I tell people, if God's pleased to have you here, we're pleased to have you here, right? right. If God don't want you here, we don't want you, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, God takes people out sometimes, you know. Yeah. And he places people in, so. So praise the Lord. Hey, man, it's been a good day in the Lord, hasn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes. Woo, man. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in uh, prayer today. And... Um, Brother Michael, would you close us in a word of prayer? Father God, we just thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you that we can rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we thank you for the message, Father God. We thank you for the salvation. And Father God, the first thing that you should know about salvation is the angels in heaven rejoice before God and for Him coming to, the, coming to you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Mary being here, Father God, and Jerome bringing them. And Lord, we just ask for safety on our leaving here, Father God, and taking you with us wherever we go. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.